viewers this is dr neena and i am here with the third lecture on cancer biology in the last lectures we have already discussed the properties of cancer cells and uh, in this lecture also we will continue to discuss these properties the first point in today's lecture is that cancer cells are able to secrete proteases now what does proteases means or what is the function of uh, of proteases now we all know that uh, the the cells are uh, in in a tissue the cells are surrounded by other cells and these cells are connected with each other with these extra cellular matrix now these extra cellular matrix is composed of different types of proteins see this extra cellular matrix is composed of different types of proteins and these cancer cells have the property of secreting proteases now after the secretion of proteases what will happen is that these proteins will get dissolved or these proteins will not be there now to hold all these cells together say this was a cancer cell say this was a cancer cell and now this cell will come off or detach from this tissue and can now move to a different tissue different tissue by invasion or also by metastasis also it can move through different tissues by metastasis or by invasion so this is what is meant by the secretion of proteases okay now coming to the next point that is angiogenesis now these cancer cells also have a unique feature of angiogenesis in normal cells also angiogenesis is present what is meant by angiogenesis angiogenesis means the formation of new blood vessels now why are new blood vessels needed in 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 general in a normal cells also these blood vessels provide the blood in the blood the nutritious elements or the nutritious things are present which are utilized by the cells for their growth and development now in the case of cancer cells this angiogenesis is very rapid why because these cancer cells need new blood vessels which will in turn provide or which will in turn help the circulation of blood to these cells and in turn these this blood will carry the nutritive things so that the cancer cells can can reproduce and or can proliferate faster that is why angiogenesis is pretty rapid or angiogenesis is seen uh, at a higher rate in case of cancer cells okay so this was the second point now coming to the third point that is loss of anchorage dependence see what happens in case of normal cells a uh, normal cells require a substrate or a layer or a base to which they can attach and only then they will reproduce or they will proliferate but what will happen in case of cancer cells they do not require any anchorage or they do not require any type of a membrane to which they need to attach they can reproduce in a medium in a semi liquid medium also in a in a semi in a semi solid medium also they can reproduce so they do not those so they do not need any kind of anchorage or any kind of membrane this is what is meant by the third point now coming to the fourth point that is tumor cells produce their own growth factors now this is very important point angiogenesis also is dependent upon the growth factors these tumor cells have a very uh, uh, unique capacity that they can produce their own growth factors in normal cells what happens is these growth factors are produced somewhere else and through blood circulation or by diffusion these uh, growth factors reach the target cells and then the target cells can reproduce or proliferate or do whatever action these growth factors are meant for okay but in case of uh, cancer cells what happens is these cancer cells they produce their own growth factors i have written this growth factor for gf and this growth factor will again act on the receptor present on the cancer cell and help in its proliferation okay so 
this kind of activity where a particular cell uh, sends some kind of a growth factor or sends some kind of a chemical signal and this chemical signal goes and targets this this cell which produced it this kind of signaling is called as autocrine we already know three kinds of signaling that is autocrine paracrine and endocrine this is autocrine where a particular cell produces a chemical signal and that chemical signal targets this cell only so as in this case this cell will proliferate start proliferating so this is uh, the importance of the production of growth factors here so this growth factors are also responsible for the production of angiogenesis okay now the last point over here is these cancer cells fail to undergo apoptosis i have also told this in the in the previous classes that cancer cells do, are very resistant to apoptosis or they do not die or they are immortal we have discussed the point of immortalization in the last lecture this is what it means that cancer cells are resistant to apoptosis or they do not die now coming to the uh, second part of today's lecture is that uh, a molecular basis of cancer this is a very important uh, point and it is asked in many examinations that uh, molecular basis of cancer uh, beginning with cancer critical genes see genes uh, normal genes can undergo genetic changes and epigenetic changes we have already discussed about this in the last class that uh, genetic changes and epigenetic changes occur in genes which lead to cancer which can lead to cancer okay now this is the most important uh, part of uh, this lecture that is proto oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes see in multiple examinations this question has been asked that what are proto oncogenes or what are tumor suppressor genes in today's lecture we would discuss about proto oncogenes and we will continue to discuss it in future lectures also and then eventually we will take over the tumor suppressor genes so what are proto oncogenes proto oncogenes are the normal genes present in cells these are the normal genes but what happens is they are more susceptible for leading to cancer okay the function of these proto oncogenes is cell proliferation what is the function of these proto oncogenes is cell proliferation okay so if if any mutation occurs in these proto oncogenes and mutation of such kind that it enhances the function of this genes uh, see i have already told you that the function of this gene is cell proliferation and if the function enhances then cell proliferation will increase to multiple times therefore if any mutation that increases or enhances the functionality that this is what is being said here that is gain of functional mutation gain of functional mutation means that function of the gene or the proto oncogene enhances here then what will happen is this proto oncogene will be now called as oncogene and will lead to cancer what we said here that any mutation in proto oncogene such that it enhances the activity of proto oncogene and it will now called as oncogene and will be leading to cancer this is what is called as gain of functional mutation gain of functional mutation means that enhanced functionality proto oncogenes are present in normal cells and if any mutation occurs in these genes such that enhancement of these function occurs then this will lead to cancer and now in cancer cell in cancer cells these genes will be called as oncogenes i hope i have made myself clear in this case now coming to the uh, tumor suppressor genes now tumor suppressor genes are uh, the normal cells again like proto oncogenes these are also genes that are present in normal cells but their functionality is so as to Uh, inhibit the proliferation or to increase the susceptibility towards the apoptosis to increase the susceptibility of cells towards apoptosis or to inhibit the cell proliferation this is the functionality of tumor suppressor gene 
and these are normal genes but what happens is if some mutation occurs in these genes such that the function of these genes is inhibited that is the function is reduced now what will happen is the the suppression that is caused by these genes on a, on cell proliferation or increase of susceptibility or apoptosis will be reduced now the cells would be free to proliferate the cells will start dividing like uh, like in case of cancer cells so these any uh, any mutation which leads to the loss of function in these genes will again lead to cancer and now these genes in cancer cells will again be called as onco genes okay i had i hope my, i made myself clear now examples of proto onco genes are any gene that is responsible for cell proliferation now examples by examples we can say that june fos and mys this has been asked multiple times in csir examination what is june fos and mys these are transcription factors we already know that transcription factors help in transcription it, it facilitates transcription right so if if transcription is facilitated it will eventually lead to cell division or cell proliferation again synthesis of tyrosine kinase we know that tyrosine kinase has an important role in cell signaling which again will eventually lead to cell proliferation platelet derived growth factor any kind of growth factor will lead to growth or will lead to proliferation of the cells this will again be an example of proto onco genes similarly kras is a, is also an example of proto onco genes so there are many examples of proto onco genes but in my opinion you need to learn at least these and with their functionality so as to cover up the um, the questions that can be asked from from this region in in this portion i have just uh, summarized what i said about proto onco genes proto onco genes when any kind of mutation takes place in proto onco genes or which such kind of mutation which increases expression or activity then this proto onco gene would be converted into onco gene and this onco gene would cause cancer so what what all things we covered we we first of all discuss about the leftover properties of cancer cells said that uh, the cancer cells have the tendency to secrete proteases angiogenesis loss of anchorage dependence and growth factors also we discussed we said that autocrine signaling is seen in case of uh, growth factors and apoptosis we said that cancer cells are resistant to apoptosis okay then we went on to discuss about the molecular basis of cancer and discussed about proto onco genes and tumor suppressor genes we said that proto onco genes are the normal genes that are present in the cells and any kind of mutation in these in these genes which will lead to the gain of functional gain of functionality will lead to onco gene will form the onco genes and this will in turn lead to cancer in tumor suppressor genes we said that these genes are responsible for inhibiting uh, the cell proliferation or for uh, uh, causing the cell apoptosis and any kind of loss in mutation in these kind of tumor suppressor genes will also lead to the formation of onco genes this would be converted into onco genes and now this will lead to cancer okay so we also now also we also discussed the uh, prime examples of proto onco genes in which we said that transcription factors or growth promoting factors or growth factors or transcription factors or gt uh, k ras is also an example of uh, proto onco genes lastly we said that proto onco genes are present in the normal cells and any increase in mut any mutation will cause their change or conversion into onco genes which will again form cancer which will again cause cancer i hope you you liked my video if you liked my video press the like button and subscribe to my channel thank you and have a great day